Tell me if any of these things sound familiar to you. You strive to be a relaxed and trusting parent who grants their children the freedom to run around and explore the outdoors. But when you watch them do so, your mind is fixated on all of the hazards around them. Maybe you're sure that your child knows the rules around being outside or in public places. They have heard them a thousand times, but they still will impulsively dart across the parking lot or slip their hand out of yours to go climbing that retaining wall. Maybe you recognize the importance of responding quickly when your toddler is endangering themselves by running too far away and disobeying the rules, but your hands are full with a picnic blanket, the stroller, a strider bike, their baby sibling, maybe it's all of the above. Have you ever been here before? Are you dealing with this right now? And do you find this experience to be even more stressful during this pandemic? Because now there is an added layer of the potential threat of disease and judgment from others about how well you and your children are social distancing and obeying guidelines. If so, I see you. And before I launch into the, into the content of this video and offer some ideas about how to make this all a little bit easier on everyone, I just want to say, this is hard. You are trying your best. I know this because you're watching this video and you are not alone. Having your child bolt away from you anywhere outside of your home is frightening. And it sends our brains and our nervous systems into freak out mode. Now add to the fact that we have been in that mode to some degree for a variety of reasons for the past several months and probably will be for many more. If your anxiety about this topic is pretty high right now, that is so understandable. So before we move on, just take a second and really accept how you're feeling and know that it is to be expected. <sighs> okay, so these are some of the questions that you might be grappling with when it comes to your child darting away from you. How do I balance my fears with wanting to give my children ample access to the outdoors and unrestricted movement. When my child runs away, should I react really fast to communicate the seriousness of the offense? Or am I supposed to move more slowly to convey my confidence and avoid sparking a game of chase? Should there be consequences to them running away? And does that depend on whether or not they ran away just to test me or out of total innocence? And then, how can I enforce, enforce a consequence like going home immediately if we're 20 minutes away? To find the answers to those questions, we really want to center our thinking around our child's experience and our experience. We have to embrace the reality of what's going on internally with each member of the family. So first off, let's acknowledge that if we go outside with our families because we want to create this opportunity to de-stress and nurture our bodies through physical activity. And yet, we are totally paralyzed by fear and the potential for so many things to go wrong. It will not be a very beneficial experience for either us or our kiddos. Children absorb our energy like a sponge. So we have to tackle this challenge, just like any other challenge in parenting, from a place of, what do I need to feel more confident and calm in this situation? How can I set myself up for success? And then think about what you're truly able to handle. Not what you think you should be able to handle, not what your neighbor down the street can handle with her kiddos. What can you handle? If you have two children and you can't chase after the older one with the baby in your arms, could you take them outside separately? Or can you plan one of your outings around when you and your partner or another adult can both go along? Let's say your favorite park is a 10 minute walk from your house. Even if it feels really silly, could you drive there instead? Or if your neighborhood park is one with a lot of exposed sides, do some research and ask around for a recommendation of a park that is much more protected and would allow you to relax a bit more. If you are going to walk, require, requiring your older child to ride in a stroller for the commute is a very good solution. And then even if you just have the rule of holding hands while you walk, 
make it non-negotiable, and then really be ready to welcome your child's objections and strong feelings. We always have the ability to acknowledge their point of view while still holding confidently to our boundaries. You might say something like, I know you're really upset because you wanna run ahead, and I hear that, but I'm gonna keep holding your hand so that we are safe until we get to the playground. And then lastly, if social distancing is a real struggle for your kiddo, traveling to a park that's farther away and much quieter is probably your best bet. It is both okay and better for everyone to make the rules a little bit tighter and restrict movement a little bit more if that means that you will be able to relax and feel like you're more in control. Think about what you need to feel okay and make that a priority because when it comes down to it, we can really only expect so much from our young children in terms of managing their own movement. If they are running away a lot, rather than comparing them to the other children, their age and wondering why they can't behave as well, or questioning if one more stern talking to about the rules would really do the trick, just accept this is where my kids are at, at least for right now. If they can't stop themselves, they can't stop themselves. So really work with what you've got. And that may even mean investing in a play structure for your backyard so that you're just leaving your property less often. And then this brings me to your child side of the experience. Let's sort of unpack that and see what solutions surface. The first time your child darts across a busy parking lot and out of your line of sight, it's usually quite innocent. They've probably spotted something far away that has really intrigued them, or maybe they just got this impulse to see how far and how fast their body could take them. And this could honestly still be the primary reason that they're running away. Young children don't yet have the capacity to understand all of the dangers and control all of their impulses, so it's just not something we can expect of them. No matter how well they know the rules, even if you've talked about the dangers before, their brain is just not developed and integrated enough to really make rational and safe decisions all of the time. So therefore, we have to put boundaries in place. And doing so is actually a really loving and compassionate gesture of care because we empathize with them and we understand exactly what they're capable of. So think, is it insulting to put a baby gate at the top of your stairs or install socket protectors when you have an infant at home? No way, right? It's exactly what they deserve from their leaders. And the same can go for having your four-year-old ride in a stroller if they tend to sprint away while you're walking. Now, it's not uncommon for this innocent dashing to turn into a more patterned testing behavior. Typically, when children run away from us, we react in a big way. And that's to be expected because it's a genuinely scary event. But that sort of response can, from us can be really intriguing to a child, and they might begin to run away more frequently just to test us. So remember, if this happens, it is not naughty behavior. It isn't spiteful, retaliatory, terrible, mean, devious. It's literally a test, just like a scientist would perform. If I do, fill in the blank, will it always result in this reaction? This is the job of a young child. Test, 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 gain understanding. So if we can perceive their behavior for what it really is, this testing, we can respond calmly and consistently. If it's a really dangerous situation, be swift and strong, but not angry. You know, run over, stop your child, confidently lead them back to their stroller, and you can just explain in a matter of fact way, we're gonna head home now. Think of this response not so much as a punishment, but just as a totally natural consequence, right? You don't want to be chasing after them anymore. They've shown you that they're in the mood to run away. So yeah, seems like a really good time to go home. If the situation is a little bit less dangerous and you really just want them closer to you when you're out at the park, let's say, you can stroll over to them at a regular pace, get to where they are. You really want to take the power out of the behavior so that they don't have a need to test you again. Once you get to them, Assuming that you've already explained the ground rules and they know that they're breaking them, there's no need to add any additional conversation around what just happened. Just hold their hand, walk them back. Remember, they know the rules and this is not why they're doing this. 
they're testing us. So along these lines, you do want to set everyone up for success when you go out and about with your family. You want to make sure everyone's on the same page of the rule book. So when you're going somewhere, give a brief but really clear overview of all of the expectations and focus on what you what you want your child to do rather than what you don't want them to do or what they'll get in trouble for. So saying something like, be a good boy and don't run away is both negative and it's really ambiguous. So I would instead lean towards something like, we're headed out to the Mississippi for a trail walk. You're gonna ride in your stroller until we reach the start of the trailhead and then I will take you out and you can run along the trail, never into the woods or out of the dirt path but just make sure that you're always in a place where you can see me and I can see you. Make sure that you leave no room for interpretation. And if your child's old enough to do so, you can also have them repeat those rules back to you once you arrive at your destination or you start your time outside. Two more things. One, start to pay attention to your child's focus when you're outside. Are they getting distracted by things on your walk that really take them out of the headspace where they can consider their own safety? Is the neighborhood playground that you're going to either not engaging enough that they become bored or too advanced that they can't actually use the equipment? These are some observations that might inform where you decide to go with your kids and also how you get there. And then lastly, consider the timing of your outing. So are you going outside at the busiest time of day when there are tons of other people on the trails or at the parks? Is everyone in your family well rested, well fed? Are they at their fullest capacity to follow the rules? And are you really ready to give your full attention to being present with your children? Or do you often have to take work calls on your cell phone while your kids play? This is all more information that you can gather to really help you determine what is working and what isn't working for both you and your family. Okay, so let's quickly recap what you can do to prevent, stop, and then respond to a runaway toddler or young child while you're out and about. First, prioritize your needs as a parent and be realistic about what you can handle and what you can't. Have realistic expectations of your children. Know where they're at. Make your rules non-negotiable and very clear. Respond confidently and calmly and follow through with your boundaries. Understand why your child is running away so you can avoid lecturing them or punishing them. Plan outings that take into account all of the relevant factors such as timing, destination, busyness of the place, the route to get there, who's going along, and what makes you feel most comfortable. And then lastly, this and this applies to every other situation with your children, welcome their feelings. We can always hold strong to our decisions while at the same time completely allowing our children to protest. They are entitled to their feelings and we can always openly accept them without letting them change our course of action. When it comes down to it, there really isn't a one size fits all or a foolproof solution here because children run away, they just do whether it's out of wonder and excitement or an interest in testing us. So once we can really accept that truth, we can start to plan around it and do what's best for our family. I hope this helps. As always, I invite your comments and questions, which you can drop in the comment section below. And if you wanna stay connected and learn more about respectful methods of child rearing, you can subscribe to my channel keep watching my videos, and visit the other links that I've shared in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. You've got this.